Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to use Ecobee Smart Thermostat. So we've got the Ecobee Smart Thermostat here, also known as the Ecobee 5, and we'll just go over the features. So the larger numbers right here, 73, that is the current temperature in our house. The numbers over here, 72, that is our current set point. So we can adjust that up or down. And because it's orange, that means that we are currently in heating mode. So we're just gonna adjust it down to 65. Now the numbers above that, 33%, that is the current humidity levels. And if we tap on this symbol up here, the fire symbol, that also means that we're in heat, but we could change to cool, we could change to auto, we could change to off. And one thing to know is that the auto set points give you a range of temperatures. So it will cool at 68 degrees, and it will provide heating at 63 degrees, and it will hold your home in that temperature between there. So we're just gonna switch it back to heat because it is currently winter time. Now we've got these couple symbols down here at the bottom. This is a menu button, this is the weather button, this is a settings button, and this last one is Alexa button. And so we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, this is actually a thermostat that has Alexa built into it. So it's like having an Echo Dot built right into this device because there is a speaker and microphone already in this Ecobee smart thermostat. So I've got Echo set up on here or Alexa set up here. So I have it muted currently, but I can turn Alexa back on. And now if I were to ask a question to the thermostat, it will answer. So let's just try an Alexa command. Alexa. Set thermostat to 68 degrees. The heat set to 68. So you can see that our temperature changed from 63 to 68. Now you can do more than just adjust the smart thermostat. You can also ask it typical questions you would ask Alexa, like what's the weather, or even use it to control other smart devices. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna click on the weather button right here, the second one over, and this shows you the current weather, the date, and it will show you the extended forecast for that day and a few days out. So we can see what the rest of the week looks like for weather. So awfully cold here in Chicago in the winter, and we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna click back on on that. Now let's go ahead and we're going to click on the settings tab over here and we can make some quick changes right here. So the very first two options are we can choose that we're home or we can choose that we're away. So if you want to save energy, clicking this away for now will automatically set that temperature a little bit lower to save you energy or in the summer it would let that temperature go a little bit up so that you are saving energy. And if you were to click home for now, the smart thermostat is going to prioritize comfort and your comfort settings over your away mode settings or your energy saving settings. So we'll just leave it at home for now. But another interesting feature in this quick change tab is you can click on fan hold. And what this will do is you can have your fan run for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, or indefinitely so it's always on. And what you might use this for is if you have uneven heating and cooling in your home, Running the fan will help equalize the heating and your cooling in your home because it's continuing to circulate air. So on a really cold day, sometimes I will put this on for an hour or two or in the morning when the house has gotten really cold. I have found that having that fan on with the hold while the HVAC is off does help circulate air a little bit more. So I'm just gonna click back on this, but you could turn on that fan to have it run indefinitely or have it run for an hour or 15 minutes. So we're gonna go back here and now we're going to click on the main settings for the Ecobee thermostat, which is this menu setting over here. And let's just go ahead and click on the top option for the main menu. And we're gonna click on HVAC and you can see we can make the same changes and adjustments to change between modes here. We can go heat, cool, auto, or off, just like we did on that main screen of the smart thermostat. Now down below, you can also change the fan to run for a certain number of minutes per hour. So zero, five, all the way up to 55 minutes per hour. And we're just gonna click back on that.
Now I'm gonna click on the second option down here. And if you have the room sensors connected to your Ecobee smart thermostat, they will populate here. And you can see if a room is occupied when it detects someone walking by with that occupancy sensor, as well as you're gonna be able to see the temperature of the room. So the thermostat itself does show up as a sensor and it is saying that it's occupied. There's a little motion sensor on the Ecobee smart thermostat right about here and it's telling me that I am currently in front of it and this room is occupied to make it more comfortable. Now let's click on the home and away and here we can enable or disable the home and away scheduling. So I'm gonna leave that at enable and what that's going to do is help you save energy when you're away from your home. So if you leave to go to work or you're going on vacation or you're gonna leave for a weekend, it's good to have the home and away enabled so that you're gonna save energy while you're not in your home. Now let's go ahead and click on the schedule tab and how Ecobee does scheduling is a little bit different. So it's important to understand this. At the top here, you have each day. So we can click Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend days. Now what you have right now is a couple set points, sleep, home, sleep. Now we're gonna click in the upper right hand on this plus symbol and basically you have three different types of set points that you can choose from. You can choose home, away, or sleep. So anytime you wanna create a temperature range or a set point, it needs to either be a sleep set point, a home set point, or an away set point. So right now, while we're sleeping, the heat is set to 65 degrees here. And when I'm home during the day, it goes up to 69 degrees at 6.30 a.m. And then it goes back down to 65 degrees at 10.30 p.m. And it's gonna stay at 65 degrees all the way to the morning till 6.30 again in the morning. And then it's gonna go back up on that temperature. Now, if I wanted to copy this day, I would just click here and then I could paste to whatever day I wanted to, but I'm gonna click cancel here. Now let's say that we are going to work and we're not gonna be at home at our house. What we're going to do is add an away mode here and I'm gonna click on away. And now I'm gonna say, okay, let's go to work at, let's just say 9 a.m. or let's see if I can get it there, 9 a.m. And now you see this set point pops up here and the away temperature goes down to 64 degrees. And then the next set point is going to be at 11.30 p.m. So what's a little bit strange with Ecobee is you can't have two set points next to each other that are the same one. So you can't have sleep and sleep next to each other or home and home. It has to be either a sleep mode, then home, then away, or sleep away, then home. It just can't be two of the same set points right next to each other. The Ecobeat won't let you do that. For instance, if I wanna put another away set point in here and I click away and just click next, if I were to scroll down and choose, let's say, 10 a.m., which is the same temperature that I already have it at nine, it won't let me even choose an away, an away set point because I've already got in a way set point at a similar time. You can't have two way set points next to each other. But if I wanted to create a home set point after away, I could certainly do that. So let's just click on home. We click next and now let's just say we're gonna be back home from work at noon and we click that and now you can see we have our home away and home again at noon. And then any one of these set points, we can adjust the time just by clicking on it and then scrolling up or down. So you can do that for sleep, you can do that for home, you can do that for away. And let's just go back to the day that we were working on, Monday. And if I wanna delete one of these, I can click on it and I can just click up here at the top and I can cancel or delete. And I'm just gonna click delete there. So let's go to Monday again. Let's delete this home set point. We just delete that. And now we're back to our home, away, and sleep modes. And we only have a few set points in there. And I could go ahead and copy this if I wanted. Now, one thing that you can't do from this screen is actually change the set point temperature. So if I wanna change the set point temperature for my different modes, home, away, or sleep, those are the only three modes that you have, I click back and then I need to click on comfort settings 
And here I can go in this and then adjust my comfort settings and have the fan automatically turn on or have it on auto. And I can click on the temperature and then scroll up or down for what I want this to be. So I can choose that desired temperature for heat. And then if I wanna make the adjustment down here, I can make the adjustment for what I want my air conditioning to be set to. And then all I need to do is click save. So you can do that for home. We can do that for away. We can make the same adjustments. We just click on the temperature here and then we can make Make that adjustment up or down to whatever we want that set point to be and we're just going to click save and you can do the same thing for sleep so i'm going to click cancel there and now i'm going to go back so we've seen what you can do with the schedule comfort settings now let's go ahead and we're going to click on vacation and what the vacation tab allows us to do is set a time frame that we will be gone so that we can then save energy. So let's go ahead, we're gonna click on the vacation tab. Let's say that we depart now and we're gonna return in, uh, I don't know, three or four days. So we're just going to scroll down here. We'll click February 13th and then we can choose what time we're gonna be back. So maybe our flight gets in. Uh, let's say 2 p.m. and we just click save and now we go to this here we can then choose our vacation settings for what temperature we want the heat or cooling to so it's winter right now so i have the cool set to off but i could change that i could put that here but i'm going to leave it off in the same thing with heat so we're going to click on the heat temperature right here and i'm just going to put this up to let's say 66 because it's really cold and i don't want my pipes to freeze and then i'm just going to have that fan run for 30 minutes per hour just to circulate air so that while i'm gone it's going through the filter and it's going to be nice and fresh air when i get back and now i just go ahead and click back and now all I'm gonna do is click save and now my vacation mode is set. Now, if I wanna get rid of my vacation, I just go in here and I go ahead and just click on the trash bin at the top and now I could delete my vacation setting. So you could do that if you came back from your vacation a little bit early. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna click on reminders and alerts. Here you're going to get reminders or alerts and messages from Ecobee. So let's take a look, we have no reminders. Let's see what our alert is. It says open the Ecobee app for new features. So as new features roll out, you're gonna get alerts from Ecobee on ways that you could save more money or more energy. Let's go ahead, click on preferences here. And what this is going to do is allow you to set time frames for regularly scheduled HVAC maintenance, your furnace filters, UV lamps, your low temperature alerts, where you're going to get an alert or a notification on your phone that you need to replace your HVAC filter, or maybe you need to do some HVAC maintenance. So let's go ahead, we're gonna click on this here. Right now my reminder is disabled, but let's say I wanna have it go once a year. I just click here on enable, and now I'm going to get a reminder every six months. If I wanna make that a year, I just scroll down here and click save. So if you have a regular service for your HVAC system, every time someone comes, you can just have that maintenance interval in there. So you get a reminder that you're gonna need your system serviced again. Now let's go ahead, let's take a look at the furnace filter here. It's always a good idea to change your furnace filter regularly especially if you're doing work in your home that's creating dust. So I'm going to leave it on every three months frequency. And then let's just go ahead. We can do our last filter change, input that information. So let's just say that we changed it December 9th. I'm going to click save. Oh, that's December 9th, 2019. No, we got to put that to 2020. And now we're going to get a notification three months from that date to change our furnace filter. So just a good idea to have these preferences in here. I don't have a UV lamp, but some of you do. You would just go in here and you can make that adjustment just like we did on the other items. Now, the low temperature alert, I consider really important. If you live in a cold climate, you're gonna get a notification that the temperature has dropped lower than this threshold. And this is to make sure that your pipes won't freeze. So I actually like to set this closer up to let's say 60 degrees so that I know if there is a problem, whatever is going on, because it gets so cold in some areas, I don't wanna know when the temperature's down at 40 degrees. I wanna know before there is a problem or if it's getting too cold in the house, 
where something could potentially get damaged or freeze. So I'm gonna leave that low temperature alert on 60 degrees and then I'm gonna get a notification in the app if it ever drops below that temperature threshold for whatever reason. So really adjust that to whatever your local climate conditions are. Now let's click on the high temperature alert. If you have a pet, you probably want to set this to a lower temperature threshold or if there's any reason that you would need it to be a little bit colder. So let's just say we're gonna set it to 78 degrees. I'm gonna click save. Maybe you don't want it to get too hot because you've got something that is climate sensitive in your home. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna click back on that. We've got our low temperature alert set, our high temperature alert. Now, if you wanted, you could even set a low humidity alert. Now, this might be important if you've got certain types of woodwork or millwork that you don't want to have expand or contract too much. So having a high humidity or a low humidity alert is a really nice feature if you're trying to maintain woodwork within your home so it stays within that appropriate range. It says display alerts on thermostat. Yes, we absolutely want that, so we're gonna leave that enabled. And then it says enable heating and cooling alerts, so we absolutely want that as well. Let's go ahead and leave that to enabled. So we are good there. Now let's go back to the main menu here. We've gone through vacation, reminders, and alerts. So let's go ahead and click on settings, preferences and defaults. Here we've got date and time adjustments, some other preferences. It shows our Wi-Fi network, or if you need to make adjustments to your Wi-Fi network, you can do so here, installation and access control. So let's go ahead, click on date and time. You could change this to 24 hour time or military time if you wanted. And you could also adjust the date and time. However, most of the time, this is gonna to update to the proper time once you connect it to the app. So really not a reason to do that unless you're having some kind of an issue. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna click on preferences here. We can change this between Fahrenheit and centigrade. We can show our heating and cooling ranges. So we can adjust these if we want this to go up a little higher or a little bit lower or make that range a little bit smaller, we can do so here. We can do the same thing with the cooling range. We can make an adjustment here. So I can scroll up or down and make those adjustments. And let's see, we can make that 63 to 92 and I could even go up higher here, 94. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna click save here. Now we're gonna click on device name. So this is actually really important if you plan on using the Ecobee Smart Thermostat with Alexa built in or with other Alexa compatible devices, because this is going to be the name that you use to identify this device and control it. So if I wanna set my thermostat, I would say, Alexa, set thermostat to 74 degrees, and this device would then do that because this does have Alexa built into the Ecobeat thermostat because this is the Ecobeat 5 thermostat or just the highest model for the Ecobeat lineup right now. But let's say we've got more than one thermostat, maybe we wanna label this something different. We could label it upstairs, we could enable our own, so we could call this something different if we have multiple thermostats. So that's important to note there that you can change the name, and if you're using it with Alexa voice commands, a very important feature to notice. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on Alexa sounds. I have this disabled, but if you're familiar with Alexa devices, it will beep after you've issued a command. So it just indicates that it stopped listening to you after that command. So I currently have it disabled because I don't like the thermostat beeping while I'm talking to it or after I'm done talking to it. So I just leave that in disabled, but you could enable that if you like that feedback like you would have on an Echo Dot device or another Alexa device. Let's go ahead, we're gonna click on screen brightness. Now you can adjust this to whatever you need for your household. And down here at the bottom, you can click this if you want your screen to sleep when it is in sleep or comfort setting mode if you don't want extra light coming out of this. So if you've got this in a bedroom, you may wanna do that so that this isn't putting off a whole bunch of light if that's making you uncomfortable at night or keeping you awake. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna leave that unchecked, but we're gonna click up there. Now we're gonna click on active to standby timer here. And basically what this is, is that this is the amount of time that the screen will take to dim down to a standby setting. Not as much power is being used then by the thermostat. 
rather than having it always active. So just a 60 second delay is fine for us. And that means after we make an adjustment, the screen's gonna remain bright. And then once we leave and we're in another room, the screen is going to dim down after 60 seconds. So you can change that there. And then we're gonna click on hold action. So if you manually set your thermostat temperature, it will hold that action until you change it or until you schedule it or a certain amount of time or if you decide at the time of change. So right now, if I set a manual temperature at 70 degrees, it's going to hold that 70 degrees until I change it. But I could make it so that action is only held for two hours and then it reverts back to whatever the schedule is, or you could have it so until the next scheduled activity. So if you have a sleep mode at 5 p.m. and you set this at 70 and then at sleep mode, it goes down to 65, it's gonna hold it at 70 until it gets to that next scheduled activity. So we're gonna leave it how we have it right now until you change it because I like the manual control. I just go on my phone and I adjust it from my phone. So if there's a reason that I've changed the temperature, it's probably because I want it to be more comfortable. So I have it holding until I feel like it's no longer comfortable. But let's say you're in and out of your house a lot or you're going to work it might be better to leave it on until the next scheduled activity so that if you have a temperature set point to save energy, it's gonna go down to that temperature set point while you're away at work. So now let's just click on the up arrow here and we're gonna go down to the next couple options. We've got heating, smart recovery. So what this does is if you have a temperature set point or schedule, it's going to do some calculations to figure out when it should turn on the heat to get that temperature to your desired temperature at the scheduled time. So it's gonna preheat your house a little bit so that if you have a set point at 5 p.m. of 70 degrees when you get home, it's gonna turn on your heating to get it to 70 degrees so that when you get home from work, it's right at that temperature set point. So we've got that enabled because I do like that feature. And you can do the exact same thing with cooling in the summer. So if you wanted a certain temperature when you get home, and precisely that temperature at a certain time, it'll take the data it's saved in here, do some calculations and make sure that that HVAC system is turned on to either cool down your house to that specific temperature or heat it up to whatever temperature you already have in that set point. So let's go back to preferences again here. And now we've got our Wi-Fi down here. If you needed to change your Wi-Fi network, you would just click here and you can adjust some of your Wi-Fi settings. Now we're gonna click on our Wi-Fi tab here. We're just gonna click on this and it shows you some settings for your Wi-Fi. So if you need to disable your Wi-Fi radio built into the thermostat, you could do that. You just click disable here. If you need to change your network or any of your settings, you just click on this tab and then now you can change your settings using your iPhone, iPad, or iPod, or you can go down here and select your Wi-Fi network manually and enter the password that you need to. So we're gonna click cancel there, and you can also click down here and you can do a diagnostics if you're having issues getting it connected to Wi-Fi, or maybe you've got some other Wi-Fi issue, you can go ahead and ping with your Ecobee. We're gonna go back to the main screen now and we have a couple items left. So let's go ahead, we're gonna click on installation settings. Now you're gonna set this when you install the Ecobee thermostat. So this should already be done. But let's say you made a change, maybe you added a humidifier or a dehumidifier. You would go in here to your equipment and then you can just click down here to reconfigure your equipment and you can add whatever you needed. Or maybe you got your HVAC system replaced and maybe now it's a two stage HVAC system. So you would just go down here, you'd click reconfigure equipment and then you could go through that process. But we do not need to do that. So we're gonna click no, we're gonna cancel and we're just gonna go back here. But that is a possibility if you've made an update to your HVAC system. Now we're gonna click on the threshold settings. And these are some very specific settings if you want to make sure that your compressor doesn't cycle too much. Now I would typically leave these as they are set up when you set up your HVAC system with the Ecovee Smart Thermostat. However, if you wanna make your cycle time longer for your compressor, you can do so here. If you want to configure staging, you can do so here. So this is for some more advanced features on your HVAC system. 
We've got our heat cool minimum delta, so we could just change this. This is the range between your temperatures, between heating and cooling, if you have it in heat cool mode. So we could make those temperatures closer together or we can make it further apart and that's just so that you don't have your heat popping on and your cooling popping on all the time if you have that range really close like a degree or two so we have it at five degrees which is a really comfortable setting and i've found to be pretty good so you can look down here and it says compressor outdoor minimum temperature this is actually a really good setting you can even raise this a little bit higher but you don't want your air conditioning compressor turning on in the winter that's not good for it so you could set this instead of 35 we could set this to 40 45 whatever the issue is because if it's 45 degrees outside you most likely don't need cooling and that just helps protect your compressor from any issues that you may have now we've got down here ac overcool max and what this does is if you live in a really humid environment it's going to allow your HVAC AC temperature to drop the temperature a little bit lower inside your house than the set point so that you can decrease the humidity. So if you've got like 80 or 90 percent humidity in your home, instead of stopping the air conditioner at let's say 68 degrees, it's going to stop it at maybe 65 or 67 to keep getting humidity out of the house. So that's a nice feature for those of you that live in really humid environments. Now down here, we have the heat minimum on time, and this is just so you're not cycling your HVAC system all the time with the heater. So you could adjust this. Five minutes is typically good, but you could put it up to 10 minutes, but it means that your heat's always gonna run for 10 minutes, or at least the fan will run for 10 minutes when you're heating or cooling. You can do the same thing with the compressor, a minimum on time. So depending on your system, you may wanna adjust those. Down here, we've got a temperature correction, and you can use the temperature correction if you've got this in direct sunlight. Sometimes you're gonna wanna retard the temperature a couple of degrees because of the solar gain hitting this face, and that temperature may not be completely accurate because the actual device itself is heating up from the solar gain. So you could go here and you could temperature correct maybe minus a half degree or a whole degree, depending on where you live. So if this is in full sunshine, you might wanna do that. We're gonna click it right now, or maybe you just wanna calibrate it to a manual thermometer you have in your house and have the two of these matched. So you could do that with temperature correction. You can do the same thing with humidity correction. You can go ahead and just change that a degree up or a degree down, and you could match it with your humidistat if you didn't have it connected to your Ecobee thermostat. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on thermal protect. And what this is, is it takes temperature readings between your sensors and the thermostat. And if it's too far out of a range, it's just not going to use that temperature sensor anymore. And that could happen because maybe the temperature sensor is next to a space heater, or maybe it's next to a light bulb that's heating it up, or maybe it's in sunlight and it's not reading right, or maybe it's got a low battery and it's an inaccurate reading. So we currently have that disabled because I've never had any issues with that, but you could put it at 10 degrees for temperature protect. So it's not taking into account those other settings from your temperature sensors placed that are connected to this thermostat. Now the installer code, just leave it on disabled. There's not really any reason that you need to use this. So go ahead and leave that disabled. We're gonna go back to the main screen here. We can go ahead and click on test equipment if we want. Now we're not having any issues here, but if you were having some kind of diagnostic issue, you could test parts of your system separately. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click cancel here. Everything's working properly. You really shouldn't need to use this test equipment if your HVAC system is running properly and set up on the Ecobeat thermostat app. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna click on access control. So this allows you to restrict access to your Ecobeat features by setting a security code. So let's say you're using this in a short-term rental in Airbnb, you could go ahead and enable a security code and then you can set a range so that people with the short-term rental couldn't turn it up to like 100 degrees inside the house or they can't drop it below 60 degrees and maybe you live in a cold climate and that will prevent your pipes from freezing. So you can click this access control here so people can't change a whole bunch of settings if you have it set a particular way. They'll still be able to make adjustments to the temperature within that range that you set 
but you can set this access control to prevent unauthorized changes with an access code. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel here. And then last but not least, let's click down at the bottom. Here we can reset our registration, we can reset our schedule and preferences, or we can reset everything. So if you're moving out of your house and you need to give this to a new user, maybe a renter, you're just gonna click on reset registration and then they're gonna be able to set this back up on their own account or maybe you're moving out, you would click reset registration. Or if you wanna reset your schedule and preferences and just have it go to default settings again, you will just click yes here and it's gonna reset your schedule and preferences to when this was initially set up. So let's say you've got some kind of schedule in here that you don't like or it got messed around with on the app and you don't like any of the schedule or preferences, this is just gonna set it back to those factory default settings for your schedule and other preferences. So you can just go ahead and clear everything out. Now, if you're moving out, I do recommend just clicking reset all and reset everything. You could do the reset registration, which is a little bit easier, but in my opinion, just get everything off of the device click reset all and this is going to put it to factory default settings now you're going to have to spend a couple minutes getting it set back up in terms of temperature set points you wouldn't have to connect it to wi-fi but you could get it set up again so that it has a temperature range while you're leaving out of your house and you could leave it in that mode and then somebody can come in and they can set up their account with this ecobeat thermostat so i'm going to click no here or if you're giving this away or you're selling it, go ahead and click reset all to get all of the information off of this device. So now we have gone through all of the settings for the Ecobee Smart Thermostat, also known as the Ecobee 5 Smart Thermostat or the Ecobee Thermostat with Alexa built in. So I hope you enjoyed this manual on how to use your Ecobee Thermostat. Please give us that thumbs up, subscribe, Click any of the links below if you want to support us or check out our other videos that show you how to set up and install your Ecobee thermostat and make other adjustments to this. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.